Today, I want to cover how to change this American flag that comes with Layered Backdrops Volume 4 into something else like a flag, a mascot, school name. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a few different situations that you could run into with this that I want to try to cover. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this these two flag layers that come with this set. I've already got my player in here. This flag layer comes with a mask that I have already added texture to. And I'll go ahead and show you that. That's basically what it looks like. I've added texture to this. It's ready to go. So when you add something else, as long as you use that same mask, you will get the same texture. And it'll be a lot easier than adding your own texture. If you don't have this set and you want to do the same thing, you could download some brushes and add a texture yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn these off. And I'm going to show you a couple different situations that you could run into with your mascots. When you open a mascot, it could be in an illustrator format. And I'll show you what happens with that. So I'm clicking on this illustrator file. And it's going to give me a choice of how I want to open it. So I'm going to say I want to open it as an RGB. I'm going to change it to 300 resolution. And I just want to make sure it's big enough to work with. So I'll change this to like, it's going to be big, but I'll just change it to 15. And I click OK. So now my file is up. This one comes with two, so I would maybe crop this out and just work with one of them. So let me just crop this, press Enter, and then I have a little bit extra here. So I'm going to uh, grab my rectangular mar marquee tool, and I'm just going to press Delete. And then I'm going to press Control D to de deselect it. Now this would be ready to go. There's no white in it, so it looks really good. Let's say that you have to open one that is a JPEG file and it has a white background. I want to show you what to do in that situation. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my layer. I'm going to, I'm going to come to Select, Color Range, and I have it as Sample Color my fuzziness is at 67, and I have selection and I have quick mask. So basically, whatever color I click on is going to be selected. And you can see it over here in the mask. So if I wanted all the black, but I want to select all the white. So I'm selecting all the white. I have quick mask selected, so I can see that I have all the white selected. I have localized color clusters off, and this is the dropper that I have selected, and I'm going to click OK. So now I have selected all my white. If I wanted to, I could press delete right now, but I like working with masks. So I'm going to use a mask instead. And I'm going to come to select inverse. And I'm going to add a mask right here. And I'm going to turn off that background. So as you can see, I have removed most of the white. But if I add a black background here, I'm adding a new layer, and I'm going to fill it with black by pressing control backspace. And you can see that it really did not select all the white because there were some pixels that were not 100% white. And so those are still there. So what I can do in that situation is I can come up here to my mask and I can press control. And then it, I get this little box with the dashes and I click it and I can come up here to select modify contract and I'm going to contract this by three pixels select inverse and then I'm going to come over to my mask and I'm going to fill this with black so I'm going to I have my black on top and I'm going to press alt backspace and now I'm going to press control D to get rid of my marching ants and as you can see if I turn off my black layer that all of the white is pretty much selected. So now I don't have to worry about that white at all. So that's what happens when you try to select uh, the white. And you can get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and click View, Fit on Screen. I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to go ahead and select my Transform tool. And I'm going to drag this into my project. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. OK, so now I have it in here. I'm not 100% sure how big I'm going to make this. So I'm going to go ahead and change this just because I don't want to lose quality. If I keep resizing it, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. View, fit on screen, and I'm going to press Shift and resize. And 
and I'm arrowing it around and I'm going to press enter and I like it right there. Now in order to get the texture on this I just need to borrow the texture from the flat. So basically I have my mask here and I'm going to press alt and drag it down and my texture is now on my bird. If I want to I can duplicate that layer and I'm going to turn one off. Now this is the part where I just kind of play with it. So I come to overlay and I decide if I like that the way that looks and I come to multiply and I reduce the opacity. Um, turn this one off. I'm actually thinking that it's a little bit I just play with these different blending modes. I'm thinking it's a little bit sharp. So what I might want to do is come to one of these and come to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just add a little bit of a blur to it. And I can see okay. Now I'm going to come to multiply and I can see the blur and I might want to back that off a little bit and I might want a little bit of blur on this one. Filter, blur, So it just depends on how you want it to look. The great thing about smart objects is that you can just turn it off or change it. If you, if you think you did too much, then you can just change it. And so that's really a nice feature. Okay. So basically that's it. I mean, I have added the new mascot and you can do the same thing with, uh, letters, which I have done here. I used these letters that I had from a different template and I brought them over. I changed the color. I duplicated it when I got it the way I wanted it. I always duplicate so that I can go back. I, and then I can rasterize the type and merge the layers. So now I have that as just one. And as you can see here, and then I just brought this flag up here and I can change, you know, the blend mode to multiply and reduce the opacity. You know, you can make it look however you want. Another thing that you can do to make it look even more like it belongs on the wall is you can add a displacement map. And I do have a tutorial where I show how to do that. And I did do that with the flag, which is why you may notice that it curves around this wall over here. And some of these areas, where you see it a little bit lighter, the color actually does go in to the wall. And that's why it does that because I used a displacement map. So that is something else that you can do to add even more to it. So it's pretty easy. You already have your texture in there. You can just copy the mask and change your blend mode.